Magazine. Hey everybody, this is Sean Holman with Truckin' Magazine, and I'm here today with my good friend Gail Banks at Banks Power here in Azusa, California. And you might recognize the truck behind us as Project Speed Bump, and it's probably been a little bit of time since you've seen a whole lot on it. Uh, and you might notice that the previous engine is is missing. Um, it's kind of vaporized. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, just, we'll just pretend that part didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gail and I got to talking at SEMA, and uh, and we were listening to a lot of the people who came back, and they really wanted to see this thing become a Ford and all be all Ford and go a little bit different direction than how we launched it. And so Gail and I got together. We contacted Ford Performance and uh, Performance Automatic. We got some friends in the industry who were on board with the project, and uh, we decided to completely change the direction. And Gail, you want to tell everybody what we're uh, what we're doing next? Yeah, we're putting a Ford in a Ford, obviously. Um, we had a diesel in here. I, I rethought it, and uh, I think this is perfection. I think this is the way to go. And I've wanted to put uh, an EcoBoost on into my engine dyno cells and, and learn the proper way to hot rod the thing. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys have been hot rodding uh, them, but this is specifically street. And this, I, I kind of picture it this way. I want to get 200 horsepower per liter. I'm in California. I have 91 octane California Kool-Aid to run, <laughs> which varies the sugar content all the time, so to speak. Uh, you know, we have winter gas, we have summer gas, and we have, yeah. I don't know, Spencer 4th gas. of July gas <laughs> and St. Patrick's gas. So our gasoline is all over the map. But, but I want to overlay it with water and methanol, uh, and maybe more methanol than water. We'll start at a 50-50 mix. But basically, I want to run this 91-octane California fuel and water meth and make 700 horsepower reliably on the street, something, something you could drive on power tour, which we intend to do, uh, or you could just, just drive it to work every day but 700 horsepower in this 67 F100 is going to be quick. Yeah, we, so, uh, we're we talking about doing it up in, in stages. So uh, Ford Performance, uh, who jumped on board, they gave us a brand new 3.5 liter EcoBoost crate engine, uh, upgraded Raptor turbos, and then we've got actually a 6R80 from Performance Automatic, who are the only guys in the business that are doing six speeds in, in EcoBoost right now. So you heard it right. We're throwing a 3.5 EcoBoost. Gail wants to get it up to 4 GT, actually beyond 4 GT power levels, make it streetable and drivable, fuel economy of a V6, power of a big block, exactly. and go out and have some fun and surprise people. Yeah, and it's already got a lot of rear axle in it. So between the Performance Automatic six-speed and the, what do you got in the back of this thing, a 60? Yeah, so we've had Dynatrack built us a, a custom uh, Dana 60 with uh, three and a half inch shafts. I mean, the thing's a beast. Um, exactly. We should have no problem, uh, no problem containing the power. So we built it strong, knowing that we we're going to have a lot of torque from the diesel, but now going gas, we're going to have a lot of torque from the gas engine. I, I, indeed we are. Uh, it's going to be a torque monster is what it's going to be. The, these engines are rated at 5,000 RPM as well. So I thought, well, we're, we're going to raise the cylinder pressure, but, but we're also going to buzz the snot out of this thing. <laughs> this, is, this is not going to be a 5,000 RPM peak. And we may get into camshaft. There's cam phasing going on here. Uh, I'm hoping the Ford ECU will deal with the cam phasing. We'll find we'll out. We'll find yeah. out, <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of an experiment so. because uh, as the EcoBoost becomes more plentiful in junkyards and there's more swaps and Ford Performance is now offering their complete crate engine system that comes with the control pack with all the sensors, the accessory drive, a fly-by-wire pedal to make cable routing a thing of the past. Exactly. I mean, it's it's uh, this is an opportunity to do some cool stuff. There's, there's only been a few high-profile e uh, EcoBoost builds out there, and a lot of them have been... Uh, stock build. So we're going to do the crate and then we're going to take it to a different level with banks. And um, as you can see, engine compartment has, has plenty of room. Um, the stock crate engine comes with 365 horsepower uh, at a peak of 5,000 RPM and 420 torque at uh, 2,500. So we should have some, some really fantastic horsepower and torque numbers when we're, when we're done. And have it be something that kind of is a little bit quiet and, and sort of uh, respectable around town and, yes. and, and, and sort of be a little bit stealthy. 
it'll be stealthy. Uh, Except for that awesome turbo whine we're going to hear, because there's no sound deadening under this hood. It's not like a new F-150. We're going to hear the turbos. Yeah, you're going to hear everything that's going on. Uh, this today is the biggest unboxing video you've ever seen in your life. Uh, I Usually, unboxing videos, it's on iPhone. It's in this little box. This is no iPhone unboxing video. This is serious stuff. So I want to... I want, okay. I want to unbox. Yeah, so yeah. So in case we, did, we can talk about you know all the little details. So there. we didn't uh, we didn't really tell you guys, but we actually have all the parts here, and we literally have not even opened them from the boxes. So Gail and I thought it would be fun to actually open up all the boxes we got from uh, PA and from Ford Performance, and uh, show you guys you know what does it look like when you get a, a crate engine exactly. from Ford. So yeah. we're going to uh, grab the grab the shears and. Yep. Gail, if you want to grab these, and I'll start cutting. Uh, we'll get this baby off. I want to do the big box first. Can we do the big box we can do the first? Yeah, we can do the big okay. box first. All right. All right, so. A little bit more down there. There we go. Oh, there we go. So here you have it is the... Uh, Box one of one and box one of two of the uh, of the EcoBoost. So Gail's going to uh, do the honors. And here, let's put this one on the floor. So let's uh, let's see what's in here. And again, uh, Ford Performance has a great uh, package deal where they have a. Uh, the engine as well as the control pack uh, all together and it's a tunable Ford ECU. What's kind of unique about this build too is um, the fact that Ford builds their ECU so that you can use it with a manual transmission, but we're going to do an automatic transmission. I see what's going on. Alright, I'm going to put the microphone down so we can do this. So check it out. Nice little pallet. Here, I'm gonna show everybody what we got here. Yeah, we don't wanna... Is this a TSA approved uh, <laughs> box cutter? Come on, baby. All right. So there it is. That's so pretty. That's ridiculously so, cool. So for those of you who don't know a lot about the EcoBoost, again, it's a 365 horsepower as it sits right here, 420 torque, all aluminum engine, 10 to 1 compression ratio, um, direct injection, gasoline, twin turbo from the factory. I mean, it's just uh, it's a real, uh, it's a really cool piece. And, and really, this engine is in pickup trucks, yet if you looked at it anywhere else in the world, it's an exotic engine with having gas turbocharged, turbocharged direct injection, exactly. and twin turbos, and now, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. So this is not the latest version of the no, engine. No, this is the middle version of yeah. the engine, from what I understand. So this has, I believe this has the, is that the electronically controlled, or is that the mechanical wastegates? That's mechanical. Okay. Yeah. All right, so this is the... Uh, might be considered a Gen, I'm not sure if this is a Gen 1 or a Gen 2, but basically uh, Ford makes a few changes along the way. In fact, today's truck engine mm -hmm. is, uh, is it 370 horsepower? 375, I think. 375. 470. 470 on yeah. torque. So they've done a lot of improvements. Yeah. We're going to far eclipse that with our build. We absolutely mm -hmm. are. This, this is something that can be run with the ECU that they've supplied. Uh, you know, and their ECU is tunable too. I mean, exactly, it's not locked down. Uh, so. uh, yeah, the ECU, the later ECUs, which are production in the trucks, can control uh, the electronic wastegates. 
Uh, but this e- ECU is some, something. To have an OE give you an open uh, <laughs> yeah. ECU yeah. for you to diddle with. It's going to be it, fun. It's pretty m- remarkable, and yeah. We'll, we'll learn a lot from yep. it. Um, as you guys can see, dual overhead cam, has cam phasing. Pretty wide at the shoulders, but obviously mm-hmm. the 67 trucks. The there's bump lots, of, lots of room. Yeah, there, there's yeah. plenty of room. Um, V6, so it's pretty short. Well, let's, uh, let's open up this box here and see, uh, see what, we, what we have. All right. So it looks like this is probably the control pack assembly, right? So this is probably the wiring harness, the pedal, the, uh, I know it comes with the intake plumbing, and well, let's out. see, this is the tensioner. <clears throat> so this is the accessory drive. What's nice about the crate engine is the, it comes with the alternator and the starter and the accessory drive, um, along with the flex plate yep. and the flywheel, all this part of the package. So this is all, this, all the stuff that comes with the crate itself. So, you want to open some of the small stuff? Sure. <laughs> I'll hand you the mic. Okay. Yeah, we might as well let everybody oh, here's know. Here's the engine cover. Ah. Okay, the engine moo moo. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, I love looking at engines. Uh, <laughs> yeah. we, we might not use this. We one. might not. We might yeah. Do something cool. Yeah. But it has sound uh, deadening on it. Probably be all oh, we are. Yeah. <laughs> what? Sound deadening? Uh, let's see. What do we have? Yeah. So the whole idea of the, of the project is to baseline the stock engine in the dyno room. Brackets and gaskets yeah. and all that fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. So. It's like an exhaust, exhaust gasket. Con- yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. You can build... Exhaust system from that. Oh, this is the tensioner. This is the alternator and uh, probably the starter, I'm guessing. Yeah. So let's move on. Let's to, move on. Yeah. We actually have some other Ford, uh, Ford performance boxes here to take a look at. So we're going to open the other stuff that's Ford. And you're good at that. <laughs> I'm just excited. Christmas in February. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so this is. Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. So Raptor Turbos. <laughs> yeah, so, so here's what's cool is Ford Performance also sent us knowing that we were going to hot rod this thing and we wanted to be up higher than, uh, the, you know, 400 horsepower. So these are actually the same Borg Warner turbos that Ford uses on the Raptor. So we're basically going to have Raptor turbos on this truck. These, when they come from Ford, are actually direct replacement, uh, bolt-on pieces, um, and they come with all the O-rings and gaskets and everything. And you can see here... And they're mechanically wastegated, so we're good to go. Okay, so let's uh, push, put these next to the ones that are on. Yeah, just so you can see Yeah. sort of the difference. You can see the housing is a lot bigger. The compressor housing is a lot bigger than on what comes stock. Mm-hmm. So again, these are, the, uh, these are the Raptor turbos, and they're direct replacement from Ford Performance yeah. parts. Uh, this comes one is probably the other the side. The other side, yeah. yeah. So these will be direct replacement bolts up, um, comes with everything you need. Um, Ford Performance Parts was telling us with a direct injection pump and Gale's tuning, we should comfortably be able to get to the 500 mark. Yep. So we're going to plan on hitting 500 in this, in this um, configuration, and then, uh, then we'll take it from there once the truck is kind of running and, and out there. Gale wants to take it apart, and we'll hopefully get up to 200 per, uh, per liter. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. So anyway, here's the, uh, here's the turbo kit. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is going to be swallowing. What will the turbine swallow? 
what's the compressor capable of. Uh, we'll go as far as we can with the Raptor turbos, and then it's probably going to be, be something uh, uh, okay, here's all based the on our Sidewinder turbo builds. Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the ECU, uh -huh. all the wiring harnesses, and yes. Ford actually provides you with the intake plumbing as well. Um, Gail's going to match one of his uh, intercoolers, so the truck will be intercooler, intercooled and turbocharged. Yeah, and we probably will do some cool-looking piping. This stuff looks... Uh, OE. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This stuff looks OE because it is OE. Uh, I'm thinking of some uh, piping. we we'll do our own tubular stuff from, from uh, our air intake, our ram air intake, and I'm going to pick cold air off the nose of this truck and inhale the highest density air we can to start with. So, again, this, so this is all uh, this is all plumbing. So we have uh, air filter. I mean, really, these these get yeah. This complete. actually yeah, it comes with the filter housing and the uh, MAF sensor as well. So all of those things uh, the. the 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 uh, diameter of the tubing where the MAF sensor resides, uh, I'll probably want to increase, so we'll probably uh, uh, adjust for that uh, MAF sensor signal in the ECU if it's adjustable there, or we'll do a MAF fooler, an inline device, so we can go to bigger diameter stuff. Probably the throttle body will get bigger too, uh, and we'll have we'll we'll have our uh, in the final build, yeah. we'll prob probably have a pair of my Sidewinder turbos on it. You want to? Uh, yeah. Move to the. Uh, we'll move to the tranny. Here, watch out. Here you go. So uh, here's the last piece of uh, our unboxing uh, for today, and this is the uh, Performance Automatic. Uh, this is their 6R80, so it's a six-speed six build. Where we, did I put the snips? We have. A we have to find the snip so we can get into this. You see, we might be able to. You got it? This is, this is a typical hot rod thing. <laughs> so, what's cool about this is this is uh, the Street Smart package by Performance Automatic. So, it's a 6R80 core that went through a three stage inspection process to meet, make sure it meets their regular standards. Performance Automatic has one of the best warranties in the business, so they're very particular. They also have a real nice paint booth. Yeah, so this is an optional powder coat uh, that comes with it. Um, Oil pan? Or, uh, yeah, they have a deep uh, transmission pan, so that's pan. probably that. Bolts. So if you look at this, uh, were to pop it open, not only did Performance Automatic uh, build this for our build, um, they have a billet torque converter that locks up between 24 and 2600 RPM. This has uh, Raybestos racing clutches. They replaced all the seals and gaskets. It's modified valve body for street and strip. There's a new lead frame, new internal solenoids, new updated pump assembly, a hardened input shaft. Obviously, it's powder coated, deep aluminum pan, billet torque converter. And this, the magic happens from the US shift trans controller that allows the crate to work with an auto, even though the crate was designed to work with a manual transmission. Uh, and this tranny now has paddle capability as well, which is really cool. So um, you have a lot of different options on, on how you want to do it. And what's cool about the U.S. shift trans controller that's supplied by PA is that there's no laptop required. And so you don't need to uh, get into it with a computer to tune the transmission. Um, so as this trans sits, it's built for more than 600 horsepower, so it should be great for what we're doing. And what's cool about the 6R80, it's a lot stronger transmission than the 4R70, much better quality transmission. Um, and the low is a 417, and overdrive is 0.69. So it has a really nice ratio spread on it as well. So as you can see, they've done a great job of putting together a, a really pretty transmission. And um, this will bolt right up to, uh, right up to our EcoBoost. So uh, we're looking forward to getting those two things in the truck and you can see just you know I mean that that thing is that thing is no joke it's a nice looking case right there looks yep see so a plate there I'm looking forward to this paddle shifting this would, would 
to be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely yeah. has paddle shift capability. I'm all about so. the paddle shift, I'll tell you. So we'll have to figure out how to integrate it into the old truck. And I torque know converter. Are we missing a torque converter somewhere? No, it's probably in one of the boxes here. Oh. Oh. We'll, uh, we'll have to go through all the stuff here. What The last thing I want to take you guys by is Gail has a 3.5 EcoBoost that is on his stand over here. And this sort of shows some of the cool stuff that he's working on for EcoBoost. So obviously, Gail's been around the business for a couple of years and uh, might, might, be, might be a little bit known for being the turbocharger guy. Yeah. And so he's been really pumped because you've been working on the Chevy and the Ford uh, gas direct injection turbo engine, so the EcoBoost mm -hmm. and um, new Camaro with the, uh, with the Chevy engine in it. Um, Four cylinder. Yeah, yeah. Bo both those. Not to mention the Mustang over there with yep. the 2.3 EcoBoost. So that's actually a four-cylinder Mustang that we're showing you right there. That's got the two, three, four-cylinder. So Gail's been really attacking the EcoBoost and the other uh, gas direct injection turbocharged engine. So exactly. here is a EcoBoost on the stand, and then he'll uh, walk you through some of the cool things he's doing with that right now. Yeah. So the one on the stand is a little later model, uh, has the uh, electronically controlled wastegates on it. Uh, so this would represent 17, 18 build. Uh, we do uh, coal, our ram air, cold air intake systems, and th this, is, this is one where I, I'm into huge air filters. So you have low velocity air through them, and you, you don't lose pressure. Uh, so what I'm talking about is the pressure that's in this room or the pressure where you're driving, the ambient pressure uh, is your starting point, more specifically the ambient air density. So this engine uh, pumps at 5,000 RPM, the horsepower peak, it pumps 309 cubic feet per minute. I don't mean what it inhales, that's different, that, that's ambient intake volume. I, I'm talking about the pistons uh, and the cylinders and the volume of the engine itself, at 5,000 RPM, the cylinders, pistons, displace 309 cubic feet per minute. The air density of that 309 cubic feet ultimately determines the power of the engine. So what I'm talking about here is if this thing was naturally aspirated, and I ran some calculations here a minute ago, uh, Generally speaking, I, 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 if, I, if I'm going to do a new engine program, I, I kind of look at how big, how much turbo do I need. So I start with a basic, and I, I assume uh, a half a pound of fuel per horsepower per hour. That's called a 500 brake spec, 0 .500. Uh, that's, that's engine builder talk. Well... To, to burn that half a pound of fuel, uh, I need air. So the air-fuel ratio I usually uh, uh, pencil out early in the program is 12 to 1. So if I've got those 12 to 1 air-fuel and I've got uh, uh, half a pound per horsepower hour, ten, that comes out that 10 pounds of air per minute is required to make 100 horsepower. This engine is pumping, the cylinders are pumping, if, I, if, if we get the ambient air in this room to the cylinders, this engine would be making 226 horsepower, naturally aspirated. It's a 10 to one engine, it would probably do it easily. Well, where did I get that horsepower number? Well, it's real simple. If you look on the little gauge here, this is one of my I-dash gauges, and we're sensing ambient air pressure in the room. So the ambient air pressure in the room is 14.5 pounds per square inch. The temperature is 74 degrees Fahrenheit and the relative humidity is right about 25 percent. The air density is what I'm talking about. The air density in the room is 72.8 pounds per thousand cubic feet. That's the power opportunity. If this engine pumped 1,000 CFM and I got that density into the cylinders, uh, we'd be making 728 horsepower. Wow. 
but this engine doesn't pump that. Right. Uh, so we're, we're, we've got a, a lot lower power potential. How do we add to the density in the intake manifold? Turbochargers are a good thing. Yep. Uh, they're cooler air. cooler air than a blower, uh, yep. supercharger normally. Intercooling. No parasitics and intercooling. So to get to the factory rated horsepower, which is 375 on the new trucks, on the new trucks uh, you've got to increase the air density. So you compress the air, that gives you higher pressure, but when you compress it, it gets hot. So you intercool it. Well, when you intercool it, it gets cold and more dense. You lose a little pressure going through the intercooler. So basically, a there's a trade-off. Uh, the whole idea is you've got these things that are I call air density machines. Turbochargers, superchargers, charge air coolers or intercoolers. Uh, those are the things. How do you measure how well they're doing? With a boost gauge? It, it won't do it. You, you, you have to measure the air mass increase, the pounds per thousand cubic feet that they actually increase the air density. So is it time to get mad? Yeah, manifold air density is what we're talking about, mad. And boost air density is what the mach machines do. They, they boost the ambient air density, uh, and ultimately, that's it. So as we go through the dyno work with this thing, uh, we'll be looking at that. What, what we've got here, uh, we're, 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 this goes in the nose of the vehicle. So this little sensor is for ambient air density. That measures ambient air density. It measures the temperature, pressure, and humidity of the air. And it plugs into uh, my uh, Banks bus system that leads back to, to the I-dash gauge. This thing also is a data logger. 100 channels, 10 samples per second. Uh, so so uh, as we develop this in the dyno, we'll be using them one or two of these I dash 1.8 gauges. Also, in the circuit right now is our Derringer tuner. This is for stock trucks. Uh, this, this thing does 90 horsepower and 116 pound feet. And, and that's torque. just this right here. The tuner is in this connector. So, what's really cool so, is, you know, going back to Part of the reason we're doing the EcoBoost build is because Gail's making a, a ton of really cool parts like this, like the I-dash gauges. Um, and, and the cold air intake. Cold air intake. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be applying a lot of the lessons learned for the factory trucks and then modifying them to work with the 67. And uh, the I-dash gauge is really cool, and I'll show you why. One of the things is I told Gail when we were starting this project, I said, I don't want screens in the truck. I don't want it to look weird. I don't want it to feel like... Uh, there's just a bunch of technology. I want it to feel like an old truck. Exactly. So let me show you what we did, um, just because it's, it's cool. So this truck had a couple of gauges in it, in the bezel when I bought it. And it had a uh, volt gauge and an oil pressure gauge in the bezel. And I thought, well, that just really ruins the look of the bezel. And then Gail and I started chatting, and he goes, well, no, I've got gauges that fit that hole. So we have a Dakota Digital instrument cluster, and we are able to fit the I-dash gauges in the holes where the old SunPro uh, mechanical gauges were. So this truck will have full capabilities in terms of data logging and tuning and uh, visibly seeing everything the engine's up to inside the instrument binnacle with no big screens hanging everywhere. So it'll be super stealth, and we'll be able to scroll through all the parameters that, that Gail has available, and we'll have two of them. So, yeah, it's my hope, uh, using the Ford ECU, to have two tunes. In other words, the gasoline tune and the gasoline with water meth tune so that the Derringer will work with, with our water meth controller, which also goes in line, and they're all controlled off of the I-dash gauge. So we'll have a tune that's gasoline only, and then when, when you go into a certain 
request on the throttle position. There's a lot of ways. We're, we're basically looking at all the OBD information. Uh, that's how my, my, my little Derringer tuners are very unique. Nobody else does that with an inline. We're basically looking, we're amending sensor signals to get this 90 horsepower. But we're seeing that we do it properly and we n never da damage the engine or the tranny because we look at transmission slip. We look at the opportunity. I call it active tuning. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing in this truck. When you, when you want the water meth, you arm the system, which you can do from the face of the I-dash gauge. And it'll also engage tuning uh, in the Derringer for the water meth. So you go to a different tune when you're on water meth. Take full advantage of what that'll do for you. So you can go up in pressure from the turbochargers to increase the density. Also, I want to put a fogger on the face of the intercooler, which will also be controlled from the water meth controller, to fog the face of the intercooler. I mean, we got a 24% humidity right now. We could do a lot of chilling of the intercooler by fogging the face and having that water evaporate as the air co comes through the intercooler. I'm talking about the cooling air comes through the intercooler. So we did that on Pikes Peak with a big semi-turbo uh, supercharged diesel I did uh, where we fogged the face of the intercooler. My God, did that bring the air temperature down. This thing is going to be real retro looking, but incredibly high tech. I mean, we're, I'm kind of an electronics geek, if you don't know that. And I've been turbocharging, uh, starting with a small block Chevy in 1968. So it's, turbocharging has been very good to me. Uh, so I've been turbocharging 40 years, and I've been hot rodding for 60. So, and then in comes Sean with something that lights my fire. <laughs> it's my 60th year in business. This is pretty cool. Awesome. So uh, just want to uh, thank everybody for watching. And... Uh, Again, this is Sean Holman from Trucking and Gail Banks. We're over at Banks' facility, uh, Banks Power, Gail Banks Engineering. And we are putting an EcoBoost, much like this one, EcoBoost 3.5 liter V6, uh, crate engine from Ford Performance Parts, along with a performance accessory 6R80 transmission. We're going to marry them up together, and we're going to put them in an uh, old project speed bump here. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to get this thing running uh, by late spring, early summer. So stay tuned to both our Facebook page, trucktrend.com, where you find all the trucking content, as well as, uh, um, as well as our Facebook page and the magazine to make sure that you can keep up with it. And we'll also have it... Uh on the Banks Power Facebook page. We're going to post almost daily. Uh, when we have mo monumental thing, things to post, yeah. we'll be talking with Sean, and it, it, it'll be through the Truck Train channel as well. Uh, also, Banks Insider on Gail, uh, pardon me, on BanksPower.com. You can go to BanksPower.com and sign up for the Insider feed, and you'll get everything we're doing here. Uh, maybe some videos uh, out of the dyno uh, facility and what have you. So this is going to be a cool deal. We know it's going to be at SEMA. I, I mean, that's in the plan. I'd love to have it on the Hot Rod Power Tour. We'll see, we'll see where we get. Yeah. So thank you, Sean, for throwing this challenge at me and, and making my 60th year in business kind of exciting. I'll hand it back to you. Thanks. Thanks, Gail. And again, thanks for all of our readers. Also, uh, there's the Speed Bump. It's project, at Project Speed Bump on Facebook where we'll put all the information as well. But it'll all be on the trucking, uh, the trucking page, trucktrend.com. Gail will have information. Stay tuned. Feel free to write some comments. We'll go through them later and answer anything that you have. And we're looking forward to uh, chasing down some C10s and old Ford. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> talk, to, talk to you guys soon. Thanks.